So there I was, minding my own business, reading the paper. It was an English paper, The Guardian. And uh, I'm reading about uh, Chromebook. Chromebook. Uh, point being is that we've got your, uh, your, your Windows and your Macintosh operating system. But now they're making a new operating system, uh, which is you know, a third player in the game. I thought, oh, I'm interested in this sort of stuff. Anyway, I'm reading on about the Chromebook, uh, invented by Google on their operating system. And uh, it's not available yet, except uh, except uh, somewhere in Asia, and uh, and all. And this is where my my eyes pricked up. If there is such a thing, it said, and also unofficially from the Australian company Kogan, which is selling them in Australia and the UK. At which point, I thought Kogan. I've seen that name before. Uh, they sell computers. I kept looking. Next thing I know, I've discovered this bloke who's here with me now, Ruslan Kogan. Good morning. Good morning, Red. How don't, are you? Tr- don't try and sell anything, all right? Yeah, that, that, We're the I'm... ABC. We're not here to sell your stuff. All right. We're just keep this completely theoretical. All right? I'll, I'll do my best because it sells itself. I <laughs> oh, see so you've started already. Now, you've been selling computers. And... LCD TVs, GPSs. Blu-rays, anything home entertainment related. You, you can't. You just live to sell stuff, don't you? Uh, not quite. We live to give consumers exactly what they're after. Oh, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you give them things they don't want, and then you're stuck with it. Yeah. No, not quite. We've got money back guarantees and all of that. So yeah. Oh, can... oh, stop it! Stop <laughs> it! We're talking about the Chromebook. How yep. come you've got a Chromebook unofficially? Yeah, oh, well, there's the Google Chromium OS, uh, which is the main project from Google for this new operating system. But uh, the go- oh, It's an open source operating system. Which so means, anybody can write it. Which means, yeah, anybody can use it uh, on their hardware. We were actually the first Chromium laptop released in the world. So we beat Samsung and Acer to it. They, they released theirs a few days later and but started that, shipping it. That doesn't sound right because you live in Elstonwick. Yeah, correct. Right. Um, Shouldn't got, it be somewhere somewhere more important than Elston Week that the first one gets released? We, we've got some great talent in Australia. So in our office in Albert Park, we've got some of the most intelligent people in the world working there. And I've got an amazing team. And thanks to them, we were able to put this together, oh, beat the stop world stop it. We're not doing the credit sequence yet. You wait for but the music. It, it, it's true. It's not all me. It's uh, some amazing people in the background made it happen. The thing about a Chromebook, as I understand it, is it has no programs on it. Correct. So the way that it works is it's essentially just a browser. And it moves away from this whole concept of having a hard drive on your computer and storing things in your computer. Mm -hmm. And it's all about the cloud. So it's all about storing things in the internet. And any any processing you want to do, you can do in the cloud. There's minimal processing that happens on the laptop, but the majority happens in the cloud. It's, It's a typewriter with a radio attached to it. To, to a degree, yeah. Which makes it's, it, two things about that, it makes it boot up really fast, like eight seconds or something ridiculous. Our one does it in four. Ooh. Twice as fast as the Acer and Samsung equivalent. Yeah, all right, stop it. <laughs> stop selling things, Rosalind. All no, right? I'm, just, I'm stating facts. <laughs> okay. I'm not, not selling anything yet. And I presume it's fairly light. It is. It's light, it's small, it's fast, portable, and it's the future of technology. It's where technology is heading. You hope. No, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so all your, for instance, if you, wanted, if you wanted to do word processing, I mean, look, one of the things about computers is everybody buys computers that can do all manner of things, and then they don't bother to do them on their computers. Most people use computers in a fairly limited way. So if you were going to do word processing, you send the, the words, as it were, up into the cloud? and Correct. So you use applications through the browser. So it still has programs and everything like that, but it all happens through through your uh, internet browser. So you'd use things like Google Docs or Microsoft's got a version of an online in the cloud software. So essentially it's all the same software, but it all happens um, all through your browser and you don't have to store anything locally. And what it also means is that- What what if they lose my data? Yeah, well, they they tend to be pretty good at it. What if they Um, look at my data? What, What if they look at my special pictures that I wanted to store of my family? Yeah. Um, 
Look, it's all it's all secure. It's all with the agreements you've got with the companies like Facebook and Google and things like that. Well, they've, and, they've turned out to be a bit iffy sometimes, mm, I'd, Facebook. I'd, I'd say that they're, they're some of the most legitimate companies out there. You know, it, Any business knows that they're all about reputation. They're going to be judged based on their reputation of how well they protect information, how well they respect everyone's privacy and security. And, um, you know, bottom line is Facebook's got more to lose with a security breach than the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Um, if you look at their market cap. So, uh, you know, these companies know that the moment something goes wrong, they're stuffed. So they're, they're the world leaders in this sort of stuff, and they've been doing a great job. And people know, you know, people aren't familiar with this whole cloud computing just yet, but everyone knows that... I think people um, sort of get the idea. They're, they're, they're getting there already. They're doing it without realising. Like, if you use Gmail or Hotmail, if I was allowed to say those two... No, yeah, names, I know. Yeah, they're yeah, fine. Yeah. not trying to sell anything. Um, if you use Gmail or Hotmail, you your could, emails are already in the cloud. Yeah, so yeah. So that, that is what the whole cloud concept's about. You, and you don't carry your email around with exactly. you. You store it And remotely. you can access them from any computer, any browser, around the world and the moment Gmail gets updated with a newer version you've automatically got the latest program when you're accessing it through the browser in the same thing people have been doing it with photos with Facebook and Flickr and their contacts and all of this sort of stuff so we're starting to realize and you know keep our information in the cloud without yet as such calling it cloud computing well actually that's one of the side effects the arguably good side effects of using this operating system if your computer breaks you just throw it away and move to the next computer correct and it cre- and all it, the information is still there it's still in the cloud so the moment you you're at another computer you you're exactly where you left off previously how did you get the how did you get to be on the ground floor with chromebooks how did you get to be the first person in the world from by acting fast. It's an open source operating system, which means Google has made the code publicly available. Oh, so anyone can whack one on their computer, theoretically. Yeah, the, they'll run into a few roadblocks as they're doing it. But um, So did you have to manufacture machines that could run it? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we're all about the latest technology. So we were onto it pretty fast and... Um, knew that this is exactly what people want. And actually, our first two production runs of these sold out within days. So you've already sold these? Yeah. Even though... Sold and delivered them in Australia and the UK. Right. Yeah, so Elstonwick is the new Silicon Valley. Yeah, well, Albert Park. <laughs> Albert Park. <laughs> but you grew up in Elstonwick, yeah? I did, yeah. yeah. Well, you're in the process of growing up. You're what? No. 28. Well, Elstonwick Commission Flats is where it all started. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're sort of a curious person too because you you go you're kind of active in an odd sort of ways. You're completely uh, against the idea of 3D television. I see. Yeah, well, with 3D TV, we were saying, well, all these companies are charging people extra for it, but there's just a lack of content out there. And I have people, noticed that. Yes, and people aren't comfortable sitting around wearing goggles when they're watching TV with their mates. Oh, a special event, maybe you might do it. It's, Communication's all about eye contact. So I found it a bit weird. I've played with the technology. And on top of that, they've given cameramen who are trained at 2D, 3D cameras and said, go. And you look at the World Cup, and the best thing about the World Cup in 3D was when the FIFA logo flashed across the screen. <laughs> yeah, you nice. know, because everything else, they're giving you a bird's eye view where 3D makes no difference. So uh, the technology's got a long way to go before you can ask people to pay thousands of dollars extra for a 3D TV. Russell? Are you really rich? Don't think. I think I'm in a bit of debt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but the the wheels are turning over very very fast. Uh, yeah. Look, um, we're we're growing at a huge pace, mm-hmm. and um, you know through giving customers exactly what they want, and that's what we're all about. I've got a passion for technology. Yeah, me too. Um, we. We want to make technology more affordable for everyone. We want people using the latest technology. I think that technology enriches lives. It makes things better, makes people more productive, lets people communicate easier. Um, oh, no, yeah, even, no, they're just toys for playing with. Come on, mm, let's be honest. Technology is even upturning dictators in the Middle East, you know, by letting people communicate and giving them the freedom of information. So uh, there's amazing things that technology is capable of achieving. So we want to see technology and the internet and computers in as many hands as possible around the world. Well, you're doing a very good job of um, 
of going about it, I must say. I, I, I'm very impressed by your by your progress. A mere child, <laughs> and uh, already you are at the cutting edge of both capitalism and technology. Will you become Elston Wick's uh, first oligarch? Do you think? Can Can I expect to see you on some giant yacht moored at St Kilda Pier with? Uh, you know, girls in bikinis and champagne and that yeah. sort of thing? Um, look, I, at this stage, you're more likely to see me in Las Vegas partying it up there occasionally. But uh, I do love fishing and I do love I do love yachts. But, you know, it's it's not about the money anymore. It's it's about... Uh, well, after the first $100 million, it's not, worth it, not about the money yeah. anymore. Look, you'll see me valued at all different numbers in different publications, but I think my grandmother said it best. She said, uh, look, mate, I think they're undervaluing you because I think you're priceless. Oh, that's very so, sweet. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's... a, uh, it's Yeah, look, you, you work hard. I work over 100 hours a week, mm-hmm. and um, there's rewards that come along with that, and, but there's also a lot of responsibility. Can I give you a very simple piece of advice? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I love it. It's a, you know, some people actually ask me, they say, how, how much do you work a week? How often do you work? And I said, well, I don't really look at it as work. I live this stuff. Yeah. I'd be checking emails every few seconds, rolling over in bed, coming up with ideas, jumping out of bed, typing out an email because I've got an idea, like on a flight constantly with a laptop. It's, it's go, 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 go. Those people that think that starting a business and starting a new venture means you become your own boss and you work less hours, um, I dare them to try. Yeah. And to any mothers out there who've got children and you think, oh, I'm a bit worried about him, he's got attention deficit disorder, don't worry. Just relax. It'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you, Rosalind. Cheers. Thanks, Red. Rosalind Kogan is going to be Melbourne's first oligarch.